Hi, I just wanted to show you a video and document this a failure in a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. So it's a uh, CM4, uh, as they call it. There it is. Uh, is it the latest? Have they got the CM5 out? I don't know. I don't follow this sort of stuff. Um, anyway, I've got it mounted on one of these uh, little adapter boards because normally it has like no I, like all the I.O. is through those, uh, there's two of those very high density um, board to board interconnects there and that's the only I.O. on this board, uh, on the compute module, is available through those I.O. pins. So to make it anything useful you've got to mount it on like an adapter board or you've got to design your product around it. So I've got it mounted on this um, uh, wave share, I don't know, I just got it on eBay somewhere um, and it's like a, you know, it's got HDMI and uh, Ethernet and USB and USB power in and all the requisite uh, stuff, right, and the uh, Raspberry 4 uh, I.O. header on it, right. So this actually comes from, and I believe it's failed, <laughs> but it, it actually comes from my AERL gateway. Um, you see in this uh, video, this is for my AERL battery. Uh, I'll link in the video if you haven't uh, seen it. And uh, designed in Australia by Peter, who's been on my, um, who was on the uh, video when I installed the battery. And you can see the compute module uh, 4 just plugs in there like that. And then a, a heatsink backplate uh, goes on this. And it's a, just a nice easy way to develop kiss you know, they don't manufacture these in high volume so it makes sense to use a compute module raspberry pi compute module in something like this um and it's got external uh, you can power it directly from the battery and stuff like that anyway um it it had failed and there's nothing wrong with this um then like with the actual gateway itself i believe there's a problem with the compute module now when i first and i've got a second one of these modules too and it works fine on this uh, adapter board, I can hook up a HDMI monitor on here and I can get the, you know, the penguin -y boot sequence and all the rest of it, right? So when I was trying to troubleshoot this one here, which I believe has failed, um, I was getting nothing out of there. And when I was powering on, even with nothing plugged into the Ethernet, the two Ethernet LEDs here, they were like both on and dim, like at like quarter brightness or something like that, right? So uh, like it indicated that something was wrong. And then, so I was trying to, you know, get the thing working and I couldn't get the damn thing working. And then um, one time, like I went to pick it up and I realized that, ouchie, Ernie Bernie, Ernie Bernie, um, it turns out that this chip was getting hot. And like really hot, as in I could barely touch it. So, you know, if as a general, not like, rule of thumb, if, if you can't keep your finger on a chip, then it's probably at 50 degrees Celsius or more, right? So, um, yeah, and this is, turns out that this is the um, Ethernet uh, chip. This is the NIC here, right? This is the um, network interface chip. It's a uh, BCM5421, uh, a Broadcom jobby. And this thing was getting so hot, I could not touch it. And yeah, okay, normally like the Raspberry Pi, like you need a heatsink on it. Here's the voltage regulator down here. And uh, like you generally put like some, you know, um, seal pads on this and the regulator. I don't believe you regularly have a pad on the um, Ethernet chip. It should not get Ernie Bernie hot, especially like seconds after power on. Seconds after power on. And the um, processor didn't get um, hot at all. Um, so yeah, I think something's wrong. So anyway, <laughs> so I actually went to shoot a video the other day on this and I thought, uh-huh, I'll get out the Fleur thermal camera. You can see I've got my Fleur, Fleur thermal camera ready to go. My secondary one over here um, bit the dust. Um, so uh, yeah, it's the front panel's missing off it, but this doesn't work for some reason. It can't operate as a, used to operate as a camera, now it doesn't. So I've got my um, little um, handheld jobby here and we can see the temperatures on this. Now I was going to shoot a video on this and all, and it was drawing uh, 5 watts. Okay, so that 5 watts, I think most of that was going into that chip to make it really Ernie Bernie hot. And then when I went to shoot this video, I kid you not, it didn't work. Like it stopped drawing that 5 watts and it dropped down to like 0.3 watts or something like that. Oh god, you know, it's like the white lab coat syndrome, which is, if you don't know, the white lab coat syndrome is things never, uh, faults magically disappear when you invite everyone around with their white lab coats to have a look. In my case, it's all of you. Um, I invited around, I was gonna, I was about to shoot the video and it just stopped. So anyway, I thought, oh, that was the end of that. The chips probably finally died internally or something and uh, like, I don't know. Right, something's come a guts inside the silicon or something because it doesn't look to be like any issues on here and and the and the connectors are all properly seated and everything else, right? There's there's no problems at all. So 
I don't, yeah, maybe something failed in the chip. If you know, is that a known issue? I tried to grok that and it didn't know about any known issues in like the Broadcom um, chip or anything, right? So yeah, I assumed that just failed. But then I went to power it up again today and it suddenly drew, started drawing like random amounts of color, like six watts and stuff like that. So I thought, aha, uh -huh, right? Something's changed again. So, and it seemed to be non-consistent. So I'm gonna plug it in now. I've got my power meter here. I've got the power Z, which actually hooks up to the um, comms here. And I can actually get the application program to get like a graph of the current or something. Maybe I'll do that in a minute, but oh, maybe I should run it now. Okay, so I think that's graphing now. Sorry, I haven't used this uh, software any at all. So I, I think it's running. So let me actually plug this thing in and we're getting a live read in there uh, on the voltage, right? So I'll plug it in and boom, it's on five volts, 6.5 watts, 6.5 watts. It's doing it, it's doing it, it's doing something. Let me get my thermal camera back out. Uh, sorry, yeah, the graph's not updating, uh, bugger. Okay, it's still drawing six watts. Where is the six watts coming from? It's coming from, as you can see, the ethernet chip up there is at 70 degrees and the DC to DC converter is at 82, uh, no, 73 or 83. Um, anyway, yeah. Both of those, the DC to DC converter and the ethernet chip are too hot to touch. And this is the processor here, where my finger is. There, pointing to that. So there you go. That is, oh, I better disconnect that now. So those things were too hot to touch there. Too hot to touch. So let me try that again. External power, I've just got this coming from a battery pack. Oh yeah, yeah, there it is, there you go. 6.2 watts. So there you go. It's consistently doing that again. And trust me, I cannot... Ow! Ernie Bernie, Ernie Bernie. Um, I cannot touch that Ethernet chip and I can't touch the DC to DC converter because the DC to DC converter is like um, powering that thing at like 3.3. It's converting the 5 volts down to 3.3 or whatever and um, powering that Ethernet chip. So there you go. Um, there's something very, very wrong with this it's one sick puppy um what the heck is wrong with that i don't know here we go i figured out how to get the chart i had to actually go into uh on mode there right so that's just uh, right down in the noise it will actually auto scale so sorry you can't um do this other camera at the same time switch this i'm now going to turn it on apply power there you go 5.1 volts 6.3 watts there you go it's jumped up it's just very consistent very consistent power draw there there's no, like, the processor is not running. Trust me, if I plug in a HDMI into this, I get absolutely nothing out. There is something grossly wrong with that Ethernet chip. It has failed. It has come a gutsa. And, yeah, that is just, that's very consistent there. That is completely come a gutsa. And even after I turn the power off, you can still see it's all... <laughs> It's all hot. Um, uh, gr granted, uh, the processor might be uh, look cool because it's a metal can, so the emissivity uh, is different on that metal can. I'd have to put some black tape on top of that. But trust me, the, the processor like barely gets warm. Drawing six watts at the moment, and I've got my finger on that processor chip. And I can tell you, it's, it's getting a bit warm now. It's probably at 40 degrees something like that for the processor, but you kind of expect that, right? Oh, no, no, actually the processor's getting... Processor's getting a bit Ernie Bernie now. Processor's getting Ernie Bernie. Hang on. Whoa. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put some black electrical tape on top of that. Not the greatest uh, heat transfer, but <laughs> it, it means that we'll get a, a proper emissivity um, of that because the thermal camera has to be set up to an emissivity figure and um, those bright shiny metal cans are not it. Um, so yeah, so let's go back to here. And let's try that again, shall we? But of course the board is dead because uh, that ethernet chip should not be getting to, is the hottest chip on the board. Oh, sorry, no, that's it, no, the hottest chip, 101 degrees, the DC to DC converter. So down here, now 70, uh, uh, sorry, uh, what is it? Well, the max is, no, 79, why is it saying 100, and, max 109, and the uh, 90 is the ethernet chip and, and you can see that the process is not really getting any higher than any of the surrounding stuff. I can still keep my finger on that. Um, oh, no, no, it's getting pretty hot now. But still not as hot as the Ethernet chip. The Ethernet chip should not get that hot. 7.2 watts, 7.2 watts. <laughs> this is nuts. 
So there you have it. I just wanted to show you that. That is uh, one sick Raspberry Pi, one sick compute module, and the poor old DC to DC converter, of course, is going to get hot when you're dumping at least five watts. Most of that going in is probably like four watts going into, um, yeah, because I think, sorry, there's at least three, because this, uh, I've got, the other good one I've got, I've measured the power on that, and it's uh, 2.5 watts operational or something, 2.4 what's operational uh, for the Raspberry Pi doing its um, thing, running its program for the AER, AERL battery uh, monitor um, thing. And yeah, yeah, it's only a couple of watts, but this thing, you saw it, it's taken five or six, but it's had many failure modes. It's had like three different failure modes, I swear. It originally drew five watts and then I went to shoot my video and it was drawing 0.3. It, it, was, it was done, I thought it was done and dusted. Chip had died, now it's drawing you know, like, what was it, seven? Was it seven watts there? And the ethernet chip is just getting smoking hot, like Ernie Bernie hot. So it should not do that. It should probably be, um, you know, one of the lowest power chips on the board, really. Um, I, I th wouldn't the memory even take more than the, you know, if you're flogging the guts out of the thing, wouldn't the memory even take more than the um, poor old ethernet chip there? But uh, yeah, so that is one sick puppy and it's not the adapter board because I've used this adapter board successfully with an identical CM4 module from another AERL gateway and I get the HDMI out and draws a couple of watts and everything's fine. So yeah, All right. I just wanted to show you that. So if you've got any idea, if you heard of any failure modes where the Ethernet chip comes guts up, please leave it in the comments down below because we're both very curious, Peter and I are very curious to know why this Raspberry Pi compute module has failed. It's just weird. Uh, no, I don't have any power over Ethernet things at home doing any of that. I don't have any of that rubbish. Not that that would be a problem anyway, um, because it's isolated and it taps from the other side, power over Ethernet. But uh, yeah, it's, it, I, there's none of that. So I don't know. Um, it just hooks into my regular gateway at home, my, my regular router at home. I, I don't get why this thing would have failed. Usually they're, they're pretty reliable things, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's coming gutsa. Wouldn't have expected that, but anyway, thoughts and comments down below. Catch you next time.